Hello there and welcome to the sixth video in a tutorial series on how to make an endless runner game in Unity 6 for mobile devices. In this tutorial we'll be adding in some collectible coins. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. So collectible coins are kind of a staple of any endless runner. So what we'll do is we will create a coin that will spin around and then we can kind of collect it and it'll shoot up into the air and um, well eventually it'll, it'll add to uh, a number at the top of the screen. So let's start by adding in an object that we can use as a coin and we don't need to import any assets for this we can create everything from scratch. Let's go to uh, game object, let's go to 3D object and let's go to cylinder. Let's move this cylinder into position 0, 0, 0 and let's have the rotation on the X as 90 so as it is facing the right way. Let's bring it out of the ground and into the center. And let's decrease the scale. Let's have it uh, 0 0.5 on the X, 0 0.5 on the Z, and really thin on the Y. So let's have 0 0.05. So it doesn't really look like much of a coin at the moment unless you want a silver coin, but I want it to be kind of a, a yellowy golden color. So let's go to our assets window down here. Right click, create, folder. Let's call it materials and in here let's create a new material. So we touched a little bit on materials last time. Let's create one from scratch. So create material. We'll have this as coin and over here we can change a couple of different aspects of this particular material. But what we'll do first and foremost is drag and drop the material onto this cylinder. So drag and drop. What that means is that when we change it over here, we'll be able to see it instantly in our scene view and our game view. So let's change the base map color to a yellow, like that. And already you can see it looks a bit more like a coin you would collect. Um, we can change the metallic, so as it kind of looks a bit more metallic if you want it to. Change the smoothness. There we go, so it's kind of a golden coin now. Uh, you can change it to an albedo alpha and what that means is that you can effectively change how it visibly looks in the game if you want it to. But honestly, I, I think in this sort of case, it doesn't really matter whether it's an albedo or metallic alpha. For us, I just think you need to have like a, a glowing sort of a yellow coin. There we go. And I think that'll do just for now. We could modify this a little later on if we wanted to. But the key to all of this is a couple of different things. Firstly, we need to create an animation for it. And that animation is going to be when we collect it, we want it to kind of shrink and shoot up into the air. But we also want it to be able to rotate, which we're going to do via coding, as well as being able to be collected via coding. And the way we're going to do this is let's change this cylinder name to coin. And in the assets window now, let's right click, create a new folder and call this animations. And now what we'll do is we will click on the coin once again, rather when we're inside the animations folder, let's click on the coin again. So animations, coin, let's click on the animation tab. And if you don't have that animation tab, you can click these little three dots here and then you can go to add tab and you'll be able to add it right there. So once we click it, let's click on create and let's call this something useful. So we'll call it shrink because we're going to make the coin shrink. And now what we need to do is press this little record button. You'll see this turn red. So you'll know that you're doing the right thing. And what we need to do at this point is we need to define the very first keyframe, i.e. what do we want the very first instance of this animation to be? Well, we only want to change the scale. We don't want to play around with any other settings. So on frame zero, change the scale and retype the numbers that are currently in here. So in us, it's 0 0.5 and then 0 0.05 and then 0 0.5. It's crucial you do not touch anything else, just those three numbers. You'll see here that we have coin scale. And if we click this, it'll tell you what we've set it as. And these dots here represent that keyframe. So over the course of half a second, we want this coin to effectively shrink in size to absolutely nothing. So what we do is set this to frame 30. 
which is half a second because we're working at 60 frames a second and change the scale to zero, zero, zero and then press the record button once again. So what that means is that over the course of half a second, our coin will shrink from its original size to absolutely nothing. And we don't want that to happen unless we trigger it via a script, because if we press play now, you will literally see that coin disappear. There we go. See, it just disappears. So what we need to do is make some modifications to this. Let's click on this triangle animation. Let's untick loop time because we only want it to disappear the once. And then let's go to animator, click on coin, and you can see shrink is right there in orange. So what we need to do is right click anywhere in the grid, create state, empty, and then right click on new state and put set as default state. And if we press play once again, that coin now will not shrink. It will just stay exactly where it is and we can run right through it. So that effectively means our coin is set up ready to be animated. So what can we do now to make this coin function in multiple different ways? Let's start by going to our assets. Let's go to scripts and let's create a coin script. So right click, create and mono behavior script. And let's call this coin, um, what can we call it? Coin, I don't know, work, I guess. <laughs> I guess you could just call it coin if you wanted to. Uh, so this script is gonna make our coin work effectively. And there'll be a couple of different things that we're going to do in here. Uh, we're gonna declare a variable, uh, a bool. We're gonna make it rotate and we're gonna have it being collected. So let's start with the rotation of the coin. So we want it to spin around. That's going to be done in the update method. So let's start by going there. And we can say much in the same way as we have done previously when we move objects, we use transform. So we do the same thing here. Transform, but instead of translating it or moving it, we want to rotate it. So we say rotate. And then we tell it how do we want it to rotate? Well, we don't want it to rotate on the X, but we do want it to rotate on the Y. So we'll have that as two, I guess, maybe change it later on. We don't want it to rotate on the Z. And then we want it to do it all relative to the world around it. So space dot world, close bracket, semicolon. So if we were to use the script as it is now, all that would happen is that coin would just infinitely rotate. So next thing to do is let's now, uh, let's get rid of the annotations and void start because we don't need them. But well, what we do need is that variable. So we'll say serialize field in the square brackets, uh, bool, and we'll say collected coin, semicolon. So what this will mean is that when we trigger this particular coin, we set this as true. And if it is true, then it means that we want to move this coin upwards. So. Let's go below this transform.rotate and let's have an if statement. So if, and in brackets, collected coin equals, and that's a double equals, to true, then close bracket, open curly bracket, and we do the following. And we're going to use the exact same method as what we used previously. We're going to translate. So we're going to say transform.translate, and in brackets, vector three dot up because we want it to go upwards we want it to base it on the delta time so time dot delta time and we also need to give it a quicker speed so we'll do it by six maybe change that later on but we'll see how it acts out and then again we need to say space dot world because we need it relative to the world around it so at this point nothing is still going to happen because we've got no way of actually saying collected coin is true. So we need to have another method. So let's follow this line down from void update. Let's go below it and let's put void on trigger enter because the coin needs to be triggered basically. So once the trigger occurs, i.e. the player runs into the coin, then the next few lines of code is what will trigger. Uh, we'll call this, so open close bracket, 
and it, it'll make them up private. It doesn't need to be private, so we can delete that word. Uh, you'll see this appear here, collider other. Again, that's fine. We can leave that as it is. So what do we want to happen whenever the player and the coin collide? We want collected coin to be true. We also want the animation to play. So we'll say this dot game object dot get components because we're accessing the component. Remember, we use the animator. So we need to access the animator parentheses and then we need to tell it what we want to do. We need to say play and then in parentheses and quotes the name of our animation, which was shrink. And if you do have any problems with this script, I will put it in the pinned comment. You can go and download it there for free. Uh, but effectively what we're saying here is when we collide with the uh, coin, we're gonna select, uh, set the coin collected as on, which means that this will happen. And we're also going to play the animation where it shrinks. Now, we do want to turn off this game object as well after a certain point. Uh, so we're going to use something called a coroutine. So let's go and follow this void on trigger enter down to the close curly bracket, hit return a few times. And we're gonna say I enumerator, and we'll call it um, delete coin. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, a coroutine is defined by saying I enumerator. So it's a little bit like a method, but we can actually use time to control things in this. And the reason that this looks like it's an error is because we've not told it to wait for any amount of time. So let's start by saying that. So yield, which means wait, return, new, wait for seconds and we'll say 0.5 f close bracket semicolon why have we put an f well any decimal that you type in c sharp you have to put an f after just one of the little quirks the f is short for float and if you recall a float is decimal so if you ever use a decimal always put the f after it and what we'll do for now is after half a second we say this dot Get, not get, get component, we don't need to get component, we just need to turn it off, don't we? So this dot game object dot set active and in brackets false. And the final thing to do is being able to trigger this coroutine, which means that we need to go back to on trigger enter and we then need to say start coroutine and in brackets delete coin. Oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon and save. So let's quickly go over what we've written here because this script is somewhat different than the scripts we've written previously. So on every frame, we're going to rotate. So we're gonna make sure it constantly rotates. And we're also gonna check if we've collected the coin. So down here, when we collide with the coin, we do indeed say, yep, we've collided. So then this line of code happens and the coin starts going upwards. But at the same time, the coin starts shrinking because we're playing that animation. And then immediately after that, we start the coroutine of delete coin, which means that after half a second, the coin is taken out of the scene. It's not active anymore. That kind of saves resources a little later on. So let's head back into Unity. And there's a couple of things we also have to set up here to make sure that it is all okay. First thing, let's attach the coin work onto the coin. And let's scroll down, make sure it's there. It is indeed. Next thing we need to do is we need to go to our player cube right here. And we need to add a component. So if we go to add component and we can type in here, uh, char or character, and we can select character controller. Now it's important we put this on here because that means that the cube is now going to be what will trigger the coin. But because we need it triggered, it does also mean that the coin itself needs to be marked as is trigger. So going back to the coin, go to capsule collider, tick is trigger. And now hopefully what will happen is that we'll start this, this will be spinning, we'll collide with it, and it will shoot up the screen and start disappearing. Let's press play and let's check this out. So 
it is spinning and there we go so what we could theoretically do at this point now is let's make some duplicates of it and let's see if we can collect multiple coins so hold control press d on the coin let's move it this way and keep doing it hold control press d keep pressing d keep pressing d keep moving it and now let's see if our character will collect all of these coins one after the other cool so it's just a cool simple effect but the last thing I want to do is just make sure that we can indeed collect them on other tracks as well. So let's take this, hold control, press D, move it to this track, let's move it here and create a couple more. So let's collect the middle coins and then let's try collecting the coins on the right hand side. Are we ready? So that's all good. And then there we go. Cool. So at this point, we've got a way of collecting our coins. Uh, but there's still a lot more to kind of build upon this. Uh, next tutorial, what we'll do is we'll have some UI on screen that shows how many coins we've actually collected. And that's going to require a lot of back and forth between the code and the UI on the screen. But what I want to do is, uh, in fact, no, we'll keep the coins as they are for now. But I do want to remove them all at some point, but it's not too important for now. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated with every tutorial still to come in this series, and I'll see you next time.